Welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry, and today I'm going to be listing out five things that Justin Fields needs to do in week two versus the Denver Broncos to really lock himself in as the Steelers' starting quarterback over Russell Wilson for the rest of the 2024 season. Before we get into it today, like the video at the top of the show here, if you're rooting for Justin Fields and the Pittsburgh Steelers, over the Denver Broncos here in week two. I know I certainly am. I'm a big fan of Justin Fields and his skill set, man. So make sure you click that thumbs up icon right now if you're rooting for the young QB. Okay, so first up here, let's talk about week one. Because I do think um, that it was a good performance from Fields, but I do think it, there were some things that showed maybe he isn't the answer in terms of being the, the QB over Russell Wilson. Okay, so let's take a look at his passing chart here, and a lot of people have been making a lot of hoopla that there's no throws over the middle of the field on this chart, okay? But I'm not really worried about that, and the reason why I'm not worried about no throws being in the middle of the field is because offensive coordinator Arthur Smith literally said to the media that they that the game plan uh, was purposefully that way. They didn't want Jesse Bates or Justin Simmons, their safety duo in Atlanta, to wreck the game so they purposely threw outside the numbers. They stayed away from those safeties. And, you know, with Justin Fields and his skill set, he's better on the run uh, on bootlegs. He's better, uh, you know, throwing the deep ball uh, outside the numbers, right? The, you know, Fields' skill set isn't necessarily ripping balls in the middle of the field. So they kind of tailored the game plan to fit his strengths. And I'm not worried about that uh, in terms of, you know, the long-term projection, right? Because they stayed away from that part of the field. But what caught my eye, in terms of a statistic this week that's a little bit concerning is that Fields had the longest average time to throw, which was 2.91 seconds. That was more time, average time to throw than any quarterback in the league in week one. Yet he only threw down the field 10 plus yards past the line of scrimmage four times. All right. So he was pretty much a check down Charlie and he was holding onto the ball way too long. So that tells you he's not seeing the field. He's not processing information as quickly as some of the other quarterbacks in the National Football League. And moving forward, I want Justin to get the ball out faster. All right, now, you know, that mental processing speed has always been pretty slow for Justin Fields, especially in the National Football League. So we'll see if he's able to get the ball out of his hands faster moving forward. Um, but, you know, that's definitely something that needs to get better if he wants to be the long-term quarterback here in Pittsburgh and for the Steelers to give him a big second contract with this team. So what do you guys think? Let me know down there in the comments section. Grade Justin Fields' performance in week one versus the Atlanta Falcons. Give me an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going, or we're actually going to talk about our friends at Prize Picks here in just a second. And when I'm talking about Prize Picks, you guys can go down there in the comments section uh, and give me an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F. Okay, now let's talk about our friends at Prize Picks here, which is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on your phone, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. That is, if you know ball. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the Prize Picks community today. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in the month of September. That's right, only one passing yard from Caleb Williams every single week gets you an automatic win every football weekend in the month of September. That means four weeks of free W's and you already missed out on one week because week one is come and gone. So don't miss this deal on Prize Picks because it's gone the second September ends. Also, Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit on Prize Picks, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So let's see what my projection looks like here for week two. I'm obviously going to take the free money with the, uh, with the half passing yard, taking the more on that for Caleb Williams. I'm going to take the less on Daniel Jones uh, passing yards against the Commanders this weekend. I'm going to take the more on receiving yards for Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin. If you guys want to get your projection in now, you can download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play just $5 on Prize Picks. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you only play $5. You don't even need to win that projection to get the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your grade. So my grade for Justin Fields in week one was a B. All right, I thought there was some throws that, you know, obviously early in the game, he wasn't putting it 
you know, exactly where he wanted. That awful throw on the run, the Van Jefferson. He had a, a throw that was behind Najee Harris that ended up being an incompletion when it could have been a big gain to his check down. You know, there's certainly aspects to Fields' game that I didn't like in week one, but he made multiple big-time throws down the field. He made a bunch of really nice runs as well to kind of put the game away, and he really did everything he needed to do, protect the football to win the football game. So I'll give it a B. Uh, because, you know, maybe he didn't do everything that you wanted him to do as a fran potential franchise quarterback worth 50 plus million dollars on his next contract. But he definitely did enough to win the game. And he was he was definitely serviceable as your starting quarterback. So now let's get to week two and what Justin needs to do heading into this week, because it does seem like Russell Wilson's still dealing with that calf injury. And it does seem like Justin Fields will be the one out there for week two. So what to expect from Fields in the game plan this week is I do think he will once again be heavily used in the run game, design quarterback runs, uh, screen run options. We saw a couple of those last week as well. Lots of creative stuff Arthur Smith dipped into last week. I expect that to be the case again this week against the Broncos. And then also, I expect once again this, uh, this game plan to be tailored to his strengths. All right? They're not going to make him drop back and be a drop back passer going through a full field progression. Right? They're going to do those bootlegs. They're going to get him on the move. They're going to have him in the designed quarterback run game. They're going to have deep shots down the field. They're going to do things that Fields is good at as opposed to what the Bears did, and they put him in a system where they ask him to do things that he's just not very good at, and that's pure drop back passing. So let's get into... Fields' QB1 roadmap, okay? What Fields needs to do this week to be uh, the number one quarterback on this depth chart for the rest of the season. First thing he needs to do is not be dead last in time to throw, all right? He was dead last last season in average time to throw by a wide margin, and once again in week one, he was dead last in the league. And listen, man, if he's throwing the ball 20-plus yards down the field and he's waiting for deep plays to, to develop and that happens, fine, especially if he's hitting those downfield shots, all right? But if you're going to be a check down Charlie, you're going to be throwing it less than 10 yards past the or past the line of scrimmage, and you're still almost three seconds average time to throw, that's unacceptable, man. You got to get the ball out if you're Justin Fields. Then we get to protecting the football, and this is actually something Fields did a really, really good job of last week. No interceptions, no turnover-worthy plays from my eye, um, and he really played a clean game of football. If he does that again against Denver, I 100% think this team is going to come away with a victory, all right? And, you know, plain and simply, I think the Steelers roster is a lot better than the Denver Broncos, so if you're not killing yourself, if you're not shooting yourself in the foot, if Justin Fields is being a smart, efficient game manager here, not turning the ball over, uh, that's going to be a big key to his, his success in locking up this number one quarterback spot. Another thing that he needs to do is score a damn touchdown, man. There was a lot of drives that just stalled out for the, for the, for the Pittsburgh Steelers offense last week. Six field goals to no touchdowns. Um, and, you know, th th that needs to change, all right? You can't go two weeks without a touchdown um, and expect to just retain the starting quarterback job for the long-term future. You need to get into the end zone. This is something that Kenny Pickett never did. Okay, and that was a big, big driving point in the Steelers losing as many games as they did despite having a great defense. So you need to be able to get into the end zone. Fields needs to prove that this week if he's going to be the long-term starter. Then we get to uh, scoring at least 20 points. And this goes hand-in-hand -hand with the touchdown, right? Because if you just score one touchdown and you get seven points and you lose 10 to 7, then it's still not very good, right? You have to consistently move the football like this offense did against Atlanta, but you also have to get into the end zone. You have to show that not only can this offense move the football with fields under center, but they can get into the end zone. You need to have that combination if he's going to be the long-term starter over Russell Wilson. Then we get to the final one here. This is the most important. you got to win the damn game, all right? If he puts up 20 points, but they lose 21-20, um, you know, that's not going to be good enough, all right? He needs to get this team to 2-0. and oh. And, you know, it is a, a good point to put out there that if the Steelers are 2-0, and oh, all right, they haven't lost a game with Justin Fields as their quarterback, and Mike Tomlin has to make that decision between Justin Fields or Russell Wilson heading into week three or week four or whenever Russ is uh, finally available. You know, if this team's undefeated by the time Russ is available, that makes this decision even harder on Mike Tomlin. So listen, as long as the Steelers are winning, Justin Fields is going to have a hell of a shot to remain the starter of this football team. So that's probably the number one thing Justin Fields needs to do. He needs to get the W. So who starts in week three versus the Chargers? Let me know down there in the comments section. 
Will it be Russell Wilson, type RW, or do you think Justin Fields plays well enough uh, to secure himself as the starter heading into the season opener versus the Pits, uh, versus the Los Angeles Chargers in Week 3? Type JF if you think Fields, RW if you think Russ. Let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comments. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Really do appreciate all of your guys' support. We got Steelers content like this every single day for free on the channel. So if you like what you heard today, consider subscribing. Until next time, here we go Steelers. Thank you.